well, welcome to the uh, Shantae Golson Show, where every entrepreneur and C-level and above come to get meaty and information that would help them be to be productive, efficient, to meet their outcomes, and to gain their cash flow. Thank you for joining me on the Thursday episode today. I ask that you go ahead and grab your coffee. Go ahead and grab your tea, because we're going to get into some meaty information here. So if you have any distractions around, go ahead and close those out. I want to also make an announcement to you that you can catch the auto portion, but we have a new video portion that you can go to the YouTube channel of Shantae Golson International to see us in video, to see what our face looks like, and to see carry on with the conversation with us. Okay, I have a special guest today, and my guest is uh, formerly a ICU nurse, and she has transitioned herself to be uh, a coach. So let's talk about uh, our guest, Yolanda Russell. She's the organizer and CEO of Yolanda Russell LLC. Now she does have a podcast and her podcast is Accelerate Your Brand and Breakthrough. Now her specialty is not only as a former ICU RN, uh, but she has turned herself into a full time branding coach. Welcome, Yolanda, to the Shantae Golson Show. So glad you're here today. Thank you so much for having me, and I am glad to be here as well. Wonderful. So what we want to talk about today is we want to talk about some information that will be captivating for our audience. And again, we have seasoned uh, people who listen to our audience. This is not for uh, startups, but it's for seasoned folks who's been in their particular career, leadership career, and their business for five plus years. Now, I have a large audience, uh, Yolanda, where they are from the age of 35 to 66 plus. So we've got to give them some good information. We don't want to give them fluff. We need something that they can take with them on today. So in your, uh, your speaking, uh, you like to talk about life branding coaching, uh, but you also like to talk about understanding the hustle of selling um, and how, I guess, self-care with fitness uh, can also apply to helping them to be more productive. Now, you've taken your skills and you've launched your own business and you help others to get unstuck. Tell us a little bit more about what you do in this capacity. Absolutely. So I, I like to say this, especially since we're on video, I'm 36. Most people do not think that I am that age. And so that's been a unique thing. But what I will say is I fell in love with becoming the most authentic version of myself and then being able to use that in business and presenting that to people to ultimately help them transform their own lives. And what I personally found in my own journey is that building a business, and I'm sure that your audience knows this, but building a business is this amazing journey of your own personal growth. And that has been something that I've been very passionate about leading other people through, no matter what walk of life that they've been through, is always understanding that there's room for us to grow and that there's room for us to contribute with whatever path we're in, whatever lane we're currently driving our, ourselves down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we all have a message to tell that will bring an impact. So when we talk about pieces of uh, advice for those that are experiencing burnout, what would be your piece of advice? Yes, yeah, so I experienced burnout very profoundly as an ICU nurse, and it led to my breakdown, which ultimately led to the breakthrough. and what I personally will say in my own journey mm -hmm. is while burnout is a very physical thing, it's a manifestation that when the hours are long, when we're overworked and we're overwhelmed, that it does bring about certain things within us. But I also discovered that a lot of it was how I was personally looking at the burnout and how I was personally processing what it meant to be burned out and taking my own responsibility for doing absolutely everything that I could to mm -hmm. turn that burnout into honestly superpower at this point. So at that particular point of burnout, uh, it, it sounds as if your mindset 
right? You were at a certain mindset, which caused you to have a perception of what you were doing. And then you, you put a negative spin on that perception. When was that point that you caught that perception and you began to evaluate that? <laughs> That's a really good question. I think some things that we go through in life, while I really have found that everything that we do go through is a gift, and whether we see it in that very moment as a gift or not, just understanding that there's a lesson and a blessing within said gift. So I was in a bathroom at work. I cried, and that was my ultimate breakdown. But at that point, it was everything was happening at me. You know, it, it was everybody else's fault. And it probably took me a good two years to really reframe that. And I think that that's really powerful is that oftentimes we get into spaces of self-development and we want to think, oh, it just happens all overnight that you magically and mystically change your outlook. Mm -hmm. And while it can seem like that, the reality is, is the journey is so much deeper. So it took me a while and a lot of that too was I held so much purpose in my profession was that my profession was what gave me my sense of identity. Mm -hmm. And I had to step back and just figure out who is Yolanda beyond being the nurse? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, there has been times that I've said to myself that I'm more than this. I'm more than that. What else is my life, my journey going to look like? So while you were having that pivotal point in the restroom breaking down, you know, I've had that pivotal point as well, you know, um, so I decided to scale all the way down, meaning take all of my clinics, close them, and uh, really do it in, in a sense that the, the goal was to have better self-care, better relationships, because working so much and I was burnt out crispy on both sides, it took away, yeah, it took away the passion, although the passion was embedded in me because it's a gift to serve, but at some point you also have to know your capacity and where to serve and how to serve. And when you're not serving yourself, it's very difficult to serve somebody else. Now that's a that's a clap I gotta give myself because that's a big message that when you were talking about in your two year understanding, that's something that we have to come into the understanding of that we are going and going and going and we never take those miniature timeouts for ourselves that that can impact us largely. So a lot of people experience stress, right? You can feel stress, right? But tell me this. I like to ask people this. You could identify stress, but could you identify the journey of the burnout, though? Could you feel it? Did, you, did it dawn on you or was it boom, it laid on you and then you realized it? Well, the burnout was breadcrumbing itself, if that makes any sense. It was leaving these little trails of hey, you're really tired. Hey, why are you spending money very recklessly? Why do you buy this? Why are you drinking? So I just had all these very ineffective coping mechanisms, mm -hmm. but I was also, again, hung up in profession being my primary identity. And when you're working in the ICU, how do you tell somebody, I don't really love what I'm doing, or I feel yeah. that this is literally dulling my spirit. And so universe, source, God, whatever we call that was consistently breadcrumbing this for me, but I didn't know to call that burnout because I was under the impression that the only people that got burned out were people that didn't love what they did or that they were, they were bad. And I knew my care for my patients, it never wavered. When I was there, I was there to be, you know, eyes, ears, voice for them when they could not be. And mm -hmm. so that was something, again, when we kind of, you zoom out and you look back, sure, there were breadcrumbs to the burnout, but I didn't know to call what I was experiencing burnout at that time. Right, right. And that's, that's to your point, you don't see it. And that's what I try to help people to understand as a business burnout recovery consultant and coach you know, they don't think they burn out. They just know they feel a little stress and it's easy to recognize stress, but you don't recognize what's really going on because stress plus time and not attending to that equates to burnout, 
right? It's not, um, I'm feeling stressed for two weeks and oh, I'm burnt out. No, 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 no. It's bigger than that. So the, the turning point for you uh, in burnout in that restroom, where did your mind go? Was that the start of evaluation? Did you say, oh, okay, well, let me go back to work. Or did you, did you start asking yourself questions? Well, in that moment, I had a very profound wave that came over my body. Mm -hmm. And it was this, I cannot take care of people in this mindset, in this stance. And I knew that. And so it looked like me calling my mom and my now fiance boyfriend at the time and saying, I can't do this anymore. And so it was that first true admission to myself Mm -hmm. that I needed to step back and that I needed a break. And I think that we live in this culture of hustle, hustle, go, how much money can you make? How many hours that you can put in? And it's almost very glamorized to a point. And I see nurses to this day still doing this on social media, glamorizing that they've worked eight, nine, 10 shifts in a row. And it's like, where is the downtime for yourself? Because surely that's nothing more than a recipe for burnout. Mm-hmm. Certainly is. Certainly is. So uh, you were making mention that you were coping with burnout at that time as your, dre- dr- your excuse me, your breadcrumbs were dropping through drinking and, and spending money. And were there other ways that you were coping that you didn't even know that you were coping? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I will say that I have found later in life, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that food to be a level of self-love for myself. Mm -hmm. And when I was in that power spin of being super burned out, I was in a fast food drive-thru all the freaking time. And I would have my blood pressure checked and my blood pressure would always be skyrocket. And there was this moment where I went for a physical And the nurse practitioner looked at me and I'm about, oh, maybe 30, 31 at this time. And he says, we're going to have to maybe think about putting you on a blood pressure pill. I want to check your kidneys, making sure that they're functioning okay. And if everything comes back, then maybe we need a blood pressure medicine for you. And I just understood this is stress. This is literally the manifestation of everything that I'm ignoring coming to fruition. So Food was a very interesting coping mechanism for me in the sense that I ultimately was just trashing my body. And Mm -hmm. again, it's these really sneaky little ways that we don't think about it. And it just manifests and manifests and it gets greater and greater until, you know, for some of us, unfortunately, you do have that breakdown, cry in the bathroom scene of what is going on in my life? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Now concerning food. Now I think that my, my, my coping of food was a little different um, because I had a poor, I had a poor relationship with food before then. Okay. Uh, so it didn't really change because I always like big hearty meals. That's just my culture. That's just, just how you know, but I don't think that, but I did the, the frequency of large hearty meals maybe had increased because I always like, I like fine dining. That's just what I like. Um, and so I didn't see that, but I did see now, I did see my personality changing. I see my personality changing. I was irritable. I isolated from my family, not not in a corner shaking somewhere, but I didn't want to be bothered, right? And and this started revealing itself, and boom! Before I knew it, I ain't, I ain't talked to such and such, and I don't know how long. Or we were close. What what's happening? I'm not talking to my parents as much. I'm not, you know, what's going here? I don't want. I'm denying everybody calls. I don't want to talk to anybody. Now, let me give a little bit of context for me. Um, I'm a psych medical provider. So when I'm doing this all day for six days for 60 patients a week, I don't want to talk to you. 
I don't want to talk to anybody. But that became bigger, though. It became in such a way that it was an annoyance. It was irritable. How dare you call me? <laughs> right? It sounds silly, but that's just what the breadcrumbs were. Right? Mm -hmm. I didn't go into yeah. I didn't go into poor spending. Um, but you know, these are the conversation is a uh, it just reveals itself in, in such a matter. So I understand exactly, and that's what I try to help people to understand when I'm coaching them. This is not a something you recognize. It's not a, a picture because you're so far, you're so close in the frame, you have no idea. All you know is you changing. You know it just a teeny bit, but then all of a sudden, boom. Oh, what's going on with me? And at that time, you're, you're physically going down, you're emotionally going down, you're financially going down. And I can tell you financially, while I wasn't spending uh, um, thousands and thousands of dollars a week, in which I could have, you know, and not put a dent in my account, but I was losing losing money my cash flow as a business owner was going down i lost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in six months and didn't even know it didn't pay attention and then just kept losing money why because i was sort of resenting the, the business i stopped paying attention to my staff because i thought they were efficient they knew their job this is what happens you don't want to be bothered. You want to go to work. You barely want to go in the first place. And then you want to leave as soon as you get there. Right? So one of my pivoting points, yours is the restroom. Mine is I started having, I had two experiences. One I felt wasn't on me, but I can go back and think about it. One of, one of, the, the, one of uh, the parents said to me that, uh, I can't remember the word, but it was something like I was just being abrupt. What happened is when I think back, I wasn't. There's a part that she was a right and there was another part that she was wrong. The wrong part was she was trying to get over financially. And I was standing strong on my policy. The, the right part was I had just went through a breakthrough. So burnout plus a broken heart. That when I, I can't even describe, I'm writing a book right now called Burnout to Freedom. So to tell that particular story. So that in itself caused me to kind of put a shield so that I wouldn't have an attitude or et cetera. Because remember, we're, we're still people, right? Okay. The second that I noticed it, I said, oh my God, I need to do something. When I got irritated, irritated at a patient and I didn't care if she's seen it or not. I had never been that tight. So that was my bad moment. <laughs> <laughs> and those moments are so real. And I love what you said about we don't always recognize it. And that's something that this point in doing a load of self work, literally before I got on here, I'm in my journal just releasing some just old baggage that needs to go. And it is that awareness. Mm -hmm. We can really start to put our finger on, wow, this feels different, or I'm being different, or maybe people even around you are responding yes. to you very differently. That to me, this is where we create momentum. And you actually create that momentum to bring yourself out of the burnout or whatever hardship is that we're going through. But we must have that awareness. Mm -hmm. And I believe many of us walk around and we're just kind of just going through the flow. You yeah. know, things that we do on a day in, day out, driving to and from work, brushing our teeth, taking a shower. These routines that we get in, we're doing them honestly with no consciousness behind it. It's just on autopilot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that's a great point. And, you know, to your point, I think it's very important to understand the separation between the person and the business. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people, when we talk about, okay, let's work on your mindset. Nothing's wrong with my mind. I just need you to help me figuring out how I can get more cash flow. <laughs> no, wherever you go, right? Your mind goes. And if your mind is negatively 
impacting your thoughts, moving into your feelings, moving into your behaviors that has everything to do with productivity, whether you want to admit it or not. Okay. So I was at this conference. Go ahead. You want to say something? Go ahead. No, I'm just shaking my head in agreement. Like it is everything. And and I found that in my own business is that people come in and they want to build this brand so that they can get their business kicked off or really scale and elevate, but they have all these conditional things. Mm -hmm. And the conditional things is you want to be in a business, you got to do what you got to do to figure out what it's going to take. And sometimes that, like you even mentioned, it's that pivoting, it's making changes, but Mm -hmm. we can't come at this with, well, this is the rule that you have because that just does not work. Or, and, and to me, what I found in myself and in my clients is, Hey, this is a mindset or even deeper is this is an energetic disconnect that they Mm -hmm. have, you know, in their, in their life, in some other capacity that Mm -hmm. they just may not realize. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, how do I want to say it? Because I'm a, a, you know, a site mental health provider, you know, it's it's just a, a part of me to be able to help them to understand what's behind the scene, what's going on, what's causing you to have anxiety, what's causing you to have that trauma from your childhood brought up and how it's affecting your energy at work. So I was at this conference um, and and this millionaire was on the stage and very successful. Um, and you think that his success, according to some people's perspective, would get him all the way to the top, right? So while he was successful, he was sharing that it was at some point, and I'm just shortcutting the story, it was at some point that he realized until he forgave his father, he could not move past. Did you, you should have seen me in the audience. Finally, somebody finally understand. Finally, this is how I was in the audience. Because I know it is the pain and the trauma that keeps you limited. And he said, once he forgave his father, had a conversation and really went through that journey, his business skyrocketed. It is absolutely incredible. And that speaks to the journey that I've personally been on, was that I've been hiring business coach after business coach and getting into these programs and, you know, spending thousands of dollars and still having this disconnect, knowing what I was actually searching for was not more strategy. Mm -hmm. It was searching for myself. Mm -hmm. And so that has been a big, like, you know, just a light bulb going off and and doing that really hard work. And I believe, you know, we want to run towards pleasure before we run towards the pain. And this is why we don't unpack it. And for some of us, you know, generationally, we are walking around with so much on us, but it's up to us to release that weight so that we can go boom, like that millionaire to the very Mm -hmm. next level. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday, I was talking to uh, one of my clientele who has a very high position in a large uh, uh, hospital. If I may mention of it, you will know it. Uh, and he says, once I help him to understand the mindset portion, he understood how the root, his childhood root, was the, the, the towel or the journey that is exposing itself now. Absolutely. So my point in saying this is, and a lot of people don't like to use these words, but I'm just going to call it for what it is. Once you heal emotionally, you began to see yourself differently. You began to see the world differently because you're not clouded anymore, which then helps you to make better decisions. Absolutely. I, it, this is so interesting. It's, it's literally you're such a messenger right now because mm-hmm. if I could read you my journal, it, it legitimately was Let's look at the different lens and let's forgive and let's feel so that we can heal it. (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that's the truth of the matter. You know, and I I help people to understand, I can't help help you heal from a lie. We've got to bring out the truth and the truth hurts. I realize that I'm here to support you. But once you get to work on this truth, 
You're going to see your stuff in a whole nother light. You're going to go from the B, where you are right now, to becoming. Absolutely. So, yeah. I love that. So one thing I want to ask you, would will you return to nursing? Oh, this is such a good question. So it's been four years away for me. Uh -huh. And I went into nursing because I wanted to help people. Okay. And what I've discovered over four years of doing that in a very intimate way with people that are sick. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of it, four years helping people in an intimate way, but it not being when they're sick. It being when they are open and receptive and truly called and wanting to change. So on September the 2nd of this year, I made a very scary decision and I didn't terminate my license, but I inactivated it because uh -huh. it's been four years and I believe that some of the parts that we go through in our lives are simply stepping stones. And being first generation inside of the profession, first generation graduating, that that's been a process in itself of really it's up to myself to define what success looks like and mm -hmm. how I execute my mission of contributing and helping the world grow and heal. And it looks mm -hmm. different. It's, it's in a completely different capacity where I can be in my pajamas and I can be on a Zoom call. And that, mm -hmm. that is something that it's been really hard to get to this moment, but it's very empowering at this point for me. Okay. All right. So you have anything upcoming that you want to announce or share with the world? Nothing upcoming. I have started to tap into as I go on my own journey of healing and processing, understanding that there's parts of myself that I want to interject into my business and that it's almost a disservice for me not to be interjecting those things. So on the podcast, I've started, I have a collection of writings that I've just been writing for years at this point, and I call them soul notes. And so uh -huh. every Wednesday, I've been showing up and sharing these soul notes and getting this feedback of, wow, this is exactly what I need to hear. Oh, this is helping me make this decision. Mm -hmm. And so I just trust that I'm guided and supported and so incredibly grateful for the nursing journey. And honestly, with COVID and looking at where we are in the world and where healthcare is right now, I am, you know, saddened that I'm not there in the trenches, but also understanding that I'm exactly where I need to be because I've been helping nurses that are super burned out from COVID and just in general navigate, find purpose, find clarity, and find strength and inner wisdom within themselves. And okay. that's very rewarding to me. Okay. All right. Great. So it sounds like you've changed from the dynamic of the atmosphere of chaos to now feeling, I would imagine, relieved. Relieved, peaceful, purposeful, and just waking up and being in a state of intention and not a state of wool over the eyes, just going forward, this is what I do. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I think so many people are walking around like that, and it's part of why we live in the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I appreciate you joining us on today. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your nuggets with us, and I hope that you know, our audience walks away with so much wealth. Now, if you could provide um, information, building information, if you could share with us some strategies and some tools, what would there be? I know you have something called the five pillars mm -hmm. that you use to work with your clients to help them to build their brands. So how could we apply those aspects to our business and our life? Absolutely. I think that because businesses are essentially energetic extensions of our higher selves anyway, that this can be applied to life and business. And so I call these the ABCs or my five pillars. And the first okay. of which is getting aligned. And that comes back down to what we're talking about when you talk about these high, powerful CEOs and professionals 
really coming into alignment within themselves. And that is doing that inner work and going back and who's hurt you, what's hurt you, what do you need to heal from? And then the second pillar is breaking through, which we kind of touched on. And that mm -hmm. is the rewriting of the truth. What is the actual truth? And then my favorite part is the creation and the clarity because this is where we go in and we start to unpack the parts specifically when it comes to the ladies and I don't have any men that I work with, but I'm sure that they consume the information, yeah. but really getting clear on things like who is it that you are? Mm -hmm. What is your authority? What are you an expert in? And then speaking very clearly to that specific person that needs the power and the transformation that your business is going to offer. And then coming up with that clear solution that you deliver to someone's problem. And then we deliver that in whatever way is going to feel good. For some people in business, this looks like social media. For some people, this is getting on TVs or podcasts and being able to share, you know, their skill set and their knowledge. And then finally, because I am a nurse, that anytime we implement anything from that alignment to getting clear to break Breaking through and delivering, we step back and we evaluate yeah. how is this working? Is it successful? And understanding, and I know that you speak to many high power and professional people that have been at this for a long time, but just because something is not working doesn't actually mean that it's completely broken. Oftentimes, it's just a little tweak or a little tighten or maybe even a little unscrew that we have to figure out to really get ourselves and the business and the goals to that next level. So mm -hmm. those are the ABCs of really building your brand and essentially to me when we can look at this as life too. So what I would like to do is give um, practical strategies to what you just stated using the um, evaluation process. What I would encourage the audience to do is get a piece of paper, pull out your phone, pull out your notebook or et cetera, and begin to evaluate your life first by asking, am I satisfied with where I am today? Write down that answer, yes or no, and then ask yourself, Okay, what leads me to dissatisfaction? What things in my life that I can get rid of that would then provide the becoming person, the person I desire to be? Because it can be a lot of things that's in our way, friends, families, outlooks on life, debt. I mean, the list goes on and on. So that's, the, that's one strategy that I'll provide that will help uh, Yolanda's strategy coming to fruition for you. So you start there, okay? Well, Yolanda, I appreciate you being here. Where can we catch you on social media? Where can we find yes. you? Yes. Thank you so much. So I believe since we last chatted, I've actually changed my screen name and it's just underscore Yolanda Russell. Always on Instagram. That is my major main hangout where I share little bits of life and just that raw inspiration that I allow to come through me to really help people transform their lives. Okay. Well, you heard it here, folks. Go and check out Yolanda and all she's doing on social media. Um, so, Yolanda, I have a silly question for you before we close out today. Love it. Let's do it. With me, if you could be any animal, what would you be and why? <laughs> oh, this is a good question. Are you going to evaluate like what it means? Like, are no, there meanings? Don't, do okay. that. Don't, don't be afraid. Share your, <laughs> share your truth. <laughs> so, so my truth is I believe that my dog is actually an extension of me. And there's been some things and I've worked with some people that have some spiritual gifts. And years before I got my dog, Someone said, can't you see that there's this white dog that's so excited to meet you? And I was like, what? What do you mean? And my dog is just this persistent, powerful, he's 10 pounds, but very persistent and powerful. And I, I actually use him on my Instagram stories. And I say, hey, lessons with Ralphie, we call him the boss, because when I just look at his tenacity and the persistence that he has, I say, if we could apply that same level to our lives, we would get whatever we want because mm -hmm. he legitimately will look at me until I'm going to feed him. <laughs> 
So if I could be any animal, I just love him and his spirit so much. It would be my little brat dog. Okay. Mine, just short and sweet, my audience knows, it, it will be an eagle because I, I admire their ability to fly high and be uh, uh, consistent and just flow in their atmosphere. But I also love that they have keen vision. They can look very low from a high place and identify vision. I love that. I love, I love that. And that's, and that sounds exactly what you're helping people do is really redefine and refine vision beyond burnout. So I really appreciate that and had a great chat today. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on the Shantae Golson Show. Catch us next Thursday where we'll have a, a special guest as well with media information. So if you want to see the podcast uh, on video, check out our YouTube channel, Shantae Golson International. Bye for now. Mm-hmm.